G'day. Welcome back to Dad vs. Son, and we're going on with Corps Hair Leader by DVG. We're still playing the United States Marine Corps, and we are up to the New Georgia campaign. So I've done a little bit of a swap around to try and stop having to uh, screw you around so much. Um, so everything up the back remains the same. Um, Everything like this is still the same, and the aeroplanes are still the same. But what I've done is I've moved this over to here because we don't go over here all that often, and with the stress markers. So I thought what we can do tentatively now is when we get to do fighting here, I can just go like that. Okay. Um, and if it's you know, ground stuff, then I can probably just leave it like this here. In fact, I, I probably can leave it like this here anyway. You don't really need to see the chart. And I can just bring this over and we can go for it. Okay. So that stops you having to get um, screwed around all the time. Righto. So let's start with getting your motion sickness going to start with. So this is the New George campaign. Um, it's broken into three stress areas, one, two, three. Bandits are basically everything. The uh, A6s, KI-43s and 61s. Aircraft are the same as last time, except now we have Corsairs. Yay! Newbie pilots as replacements. Um, so all we've done basically is move from Gordon Guadalcanal, which is down here, up the Solomon's Island chain, and we're into New Georgia. Right. So the campaign played a vital role in capturing the Solomon Islands. Uh, the Japanese build-up. Start the campaign with targets 15, 19, and 23 in play. 15 is in the stress three stress area. 19 and 23 are in the two stress area. So nasty stuff to start with. U.S. Pilot Training Program, uh, promote one pilot from newbie to average at the start of the campaign. So that's great. I've decided we're just going to go with a medium campaign. That's eight days long. Um, so we need 21 VPs at least for adequate. And we get 25 SO points. Recon starts at two. Intel starts at no change. Right here. Pilot-wise... What I have done is I have retained our two effective bomber flights. Uh, so I have our two TBFs that we had last time. We have Bill uh, Vanderkeft and Pete Gardner still. Um, I have promoted Vanderkeft from average to skilled with the um, experience points that he built up in the last mission of the last campaign. And so he now starts with two SA, uh, situational awareness, and one cool. I have Pete Gardner, who still has his quick hands, um, and he is a skilled three. And then we have our four dauntless that we had last time. So Lewis is average on a five and has a gung-ho and a cool. I've taken his plus one gung-ho and given it to Benson, who is green four. Um, then I have Bearcat Davis, who's skilled seven, and he has a gung-ho and a situational awareness. And Walker, who's skilled seven, who has his two gung-ho and two cool. Then up the back. Dun, dun, dun. I have sent the... Uh, Wildcat Pilots Squadron back to the States so that they can be uh, refreshed, retrained on the F4U, and I've got a brand new F4U Corsair Squadron that has been sent out to us. Righto. So what we have is we have Charlie Field, who's a green three. He comes with a cool and a gung-ho, and I've given him fighter pilot. We have Emery Gallant, who is a green five, comes with a gung-ho, and I've given him Agile. 
Joe Harper, who comes with one situational awareness. I've given him focused. And Matt Ryder, who is an average four, who comes with a gung-ho, and I've got him with still got it. Now, the thing you'll notice is they don't have the uh, normal amount of newbie green blah 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 that I'm supposed to have. So if we look at a normal medium length campaign, I'm supposed to have one newbie. But I was allowed to make one newbie an average. So that's him. Then I'm supposed to have two green, and I have got one, two, three, four green pilots. Okay, then I'm supposed to have five average, and I have got one, two average. Then I'm supposed to have one skilled, one veteran, and I've got four skilled. So in the grand scheme of things, I think it balances out and it keeps the flavour going for what we had. Um, you're allowed to disagree. <laughs> I don't mind if you do, um, but that's my rationale for what I've done. So these poor blokes have uh, remained and they've simply moved up the chain to continue this um, Solomon's Islands campaign as such. And uh, the fighter boys have been replaced and that's why they're green with one average guy. Righto. Now, for all of those uh, skills... I have, even though they may have had them to start with, I have reissued them again. So I have actually lost 12 SA points out of my 25 to give those skills. So again, yeah, these people have been, um, are some of them are, are better skilled than they should be, others are worse skilled, and I still used the SA points. So as usual, my um, log has got the F4Us at the top, the SVDs, and then the TBFs um, all ready to go. And we start with those three targets, as the thing said. Now, the reason for that is that these are all called improvement targets. And improvement is this trait activates when the card is drawn and we were told to have these three straight up. Apply the effect until you destroy the target card. If you do not select or destroy these target cards, do not discard them. These cards remain available for mission selection in addition to your recon target draws until destroyed. These cards do not count against your day's target card draws. So these things are a pain in the bottom. All right, oh? So if we have a look, 15 is in the three stress area, and like I said, 19 and 23 are in the two stress area. So if we look at this one first, what we have is a fortress. Five aircraft attack, three hits. Not bad, is it? Okay. But... Until this is destroyed, we cannot move the recon or intel counters to the right. So if we do anything else, it's not going to help us. We've got to destroy this before we can improve intel or recon. Now, it comes with five sites in the target area and three bandits and two sites in each approach. So it's a bit of a pain in the bottom it's worth four VP, but if we can get four hits on it rather than three, then we'll get an extra VP. It's also a gung-ho target with one recon. Okay? So now you think, well, you know, yeah, it's, it's a meaty target, but it's not all that bloody bad. Except then we go to target 19. And it's the same sort of thing, but look at the bottom. Improvement. All targets get plus one centre bandit draw. Righto. So the fortress now has a potential four bandits in the middle. And then we go to the supply depot. And same shit. All targets get plus one centre site draw. So now we have potentially six sites and four bandits in the middle. Okay. So that's the trouble with these sorts of things. So... 
The question is, what do we do? And I have to admit that realistically, I did try this mission once before, um, and I sent two fighters and two bombers, and everything was shot down, and I didn't get... Oh, sorry, and I actually got, I think, two hits. Because this is a hard target as well. So that means that no matter what we hit it with, it's minus one damage. So a thousand pounder usually does three hits. Even if we get a ten, we only get two hits on it. So we've got to take at least enough aircrafts to get uh, what five hits because that'll only give us three. So my way of thinking is if I do these first, the easier targets, then I lose two recon and two intel. Now that's a bit of a pain because the two intel alone will take me down to minus one site and the recon will take me up to three targets rather than two. But if I do this one first, like I would prefer to do, then that means, yes, potentially six sites in the target area and potentially four bandits there. And like I said, this is in the three stress zone. So what to do? So realistically, I need to probably take all four fighters, but if I do that, then I suppose I could rest them and maybe, well, see, this has potentially got four fighters and this has potentially got five fighters in it. And in fact, until this is destroyed, this has potentially got six fighters in it. So this is the trouble with this mission is... I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I suppose the other thing I could do is I could get rid of the torpedo bombers and actually get two more fighters or one more fighter and one more dive bomber. But I've started this the way it is, so I've got to suck it up. Okay. So we will do the fortress first. I think that's the best way to go because we need to be able to move these recon markers and everything else. And I think we're only going to be able to do one mission today, so I'm just going to place them up there out of the way. So next thing we're going to do then is we're going to do the site draw. So we start with five sites in the centre, plus one is six and two on each approach. So we'll do the approaches first. And here we go. Two for the north, two for the east, two for the south, two for the west, and one, two, three, four, five, six for the guts. So let's get rid of this and see what we've got. So we have riflemen to the north, I like, and riflemen to the north, I like. Rifleman to the east and a no sight. Yay! And then we have an LMG to the south with a special sight. And special sight is destroy one VP. So that's an extra point if we get it. Then over to the west, we have a rifleman and a rifleman. So they're all wonderful. Okay, they're all zero range, low people. Okay, then we have a no sight, an LMG, an LMG, rifleman, a rifleman, and another special sight, which is... Photo, same and low, one intel. So all we've got to do is get an aircraft into here and we'll get one intel. Yay! 
Just give me a tick. Right, sorry about that. Okay, so we've got our sites marked, and uh, at least we had two sites that came up as a no site. So, assign pilots. So, again, we have potentially four bandits in the middle. And oh, so just remind you, we are in 43, so I have grabbed the 43 sites and um, bandits. So, righto. So, the first thing we need to work out is bombers. So, we need, like I said, a minimum of five hits. Preferably, we need a minimum of six hits to get the overkill. Um, a minimum of six. So, that would be three 1,000 pounders. Minimum. Minimum. Six one thousand pound. Oh, sorry. Three one thousand pounders. Um, so if I could get three aircraft through with gung hoes, then we've got six hits, and this is gone. If I get two aircraft through with gung hoes, that's four hits. This is gone. So I need at least two aircraft with gung hoes to get in. So that means I probably need to take three bombers to be on the safe side because of the amount of sights as well, which can give us some poo. Um, now, if I destroy this, I get an extra VP. So do I... Do I take two dive bombers and one TBF to come in low? Who could then destroy this site and then carry on to help destroy here? And I could give him either four five hundred pounders. Oh, sorry, two five four five hundred pounders. Yeah. Um, sorry, two 500 pounders because they're one point each, and that could do that, or I could give him one rocket to try and take this out because he can take it out from here, then, uh, hopefully. So, if we give him one rocket and one 500 pounder. That might be better. -er. More betterish? Good -er? I think so. Okay, so we'll do that. So we're going to take whom? So Bill van der Keft um, has two SA and a cool. Pete Gardner just has quick hands. He's a plus two. Bill is a plus one. Um, so at least with Bill, he can attack fast and slow twice so i think that is in his best interest so we're going to take bill um so we're going to come in from here anyway i know we don't need to worry about this just yet but he's going to come in from here and i'm going to give him a rocket and a 500 pounder which means he's got to get two hits with this to get one hit on target okay but, yeah. Do, do, do. Or do I just want to get in to get in there and drop a thousand pounder and get away with it? And forget about this extra one VP. Yeah, I think so. Um, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so we're going to give him a thousand pounder. Like that. He goes in low. He's not a dive bomber. Okay, and then I need two dive bombers. So he's a 
fast, which is great. Um, so if I give them a bear cat, who gives me a plus four in the dive, and he has situational awareness, so hopefully we get to bomb the target before anything happens, and we destroy it before anything happens, and we give him a thousand pounder. And then... Do, do, do. We give Walker a go because he has two gung-ho, and this is a gung-ho target. And then two fighters. So we want our bestest, most luckiest, gooderish ones. So we're going to take Gallant simply because he is, even though he's a zero, um, Ed Air, he's got Agile. So at least he can hang around for a while. And he has a gung-ho. And then for the other... We have a choice. We can take Ryder, who is a plus two, has a gung-ho and still got it. So hopefully he can use his gung-ho more than once. Or we can take Harper, who is green, minus one, air to air. But he's got focused and he has a situational awareness. Uh, I think the gun, well, I think we need at least one fighter that is fast to start with. So we're going to take Harper with his situational awareness, focused, and he is high as well. There we go. So this is our squadron going in. Well, our, our sorry, our um, three flights. Fighters, dive bombers, and a single torpedo bomber. We've assigned pilots, we've armed aircraft, so we get the target card. Da -da. Place one random opportunity counter in the center area. Okay. So another one. And we have. Oops, wrong one. We have destroy more bandits. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry, destroy move bandits. So if we destroy this, we get to move the bandits away one, I think. So that gives us a bit of a freebie in there. Right. So next we have place aircraft. Done. Dun, dun. We've done that. Determine and place bandits. So we have three plus one is four. Okay, let's do them one at a time just to get it going. And we have an average zero. So plus one. We have a no bandit for two. Number three, we have a no band at the three, and we have a no band at the four. My God, we were lucky. Okay, that's great. Okay, so we only have one bandit out of four. The last time I played this, I ended up with four bandits, and that was um, painful because I only had four aircraft and only two of them were fighters. Yeah, I know. Righto, bandits. Intel Air Defense Adjustment is a zip. Over-target event card is minus one from all sight and bandit attack rolls. Oh, yeah. I like it. I do, I do. Righto. Place the turn counter in turn one. We have... So, dive bombers, dive too low, no. 
Fast pilots attack? No. Sites and bandits attack? No. Slow pilots attack? No. Aircraft move. So two fighters come in. Two dive bombers come in. And good old Bill comes in like that. And then the bandit comes in like that. And we advance to turn counter. Right. Dive bombers dive to low? No, they don't. Right out. So the bandit is going to attack who? Let's get these looked at. So we have Harper, who is focused and has situational awareness. We have Gallant, Gallant, who is agile and has a gung ho. So I think what we're going to do is we will put him against Harper to start with. Like that. And then we have good old Vander Bander here, who is got two SA, and he is going to use one SA to start with to try and destroy this target first up using guns. Okay, so. Here we go. Um, and this LMG, I don't care about at the moment. We'll see what's happening afterwards. So build first. Let's see how we work this. Oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? So Bill is using guns. He's guns nine, but he is a plus one air to ground. So he needs an eight or better to destroy this target. He gets a seven. That's a pain. Okay, so that doesn't work. And then we have Harper over here against his um, zero. So I'll get rid of this off Harper now because he's used it. So um, Harper is a minus one air to ground and he is going to use his focus. So now he is a zero. And this aircraft is a zero with a plus one. Okay, so the Japanese man is going for his, uh, sorry, the Harper is going in for his attack. So he's a zero against a plus one, so it's minus one. And he is going for a tight turn. And he gets a one minus one, a zip, so there is no effect. So he goes in to shoot for a minus one, which means he needs a nine or a ten to hit. And he gets a four, so no, does no good. Right, so now that's the fast sights and bandits attack. So this one does not attack anybody. This one does, and he can only hit a low, so he's going to hit Vandercliff, good old Bill. So he hits for a five, we'll do a um, a 5 will give him 1 stress, and a 10 will damage him. And he does not have a um, gung-ho. So I'm actually going to give him 2 stress so that he can evade. So he'll use 2 die. And we get a 3, so nothing happened. Beautiful. So this will now go away. And what we have then is the zero attacking Harper. So again, like we said, this is at a plus one. He gets a seven plus one is eight in a neutral position is a half loop. Um, and he stays at a plus one for the success. And he gets a 10, which gives him plus four position. <laughs> okay, so he's going to get two position. There we go. And he gets plus one attack. So he's at plus one, plus two, plus three for being tail, tailing, 
is plus 5. So no matter what, we're going to get a stress. Now Harper is going to take nothing at the moment. Gallant is going to try and suppress him first. So Gallant takes one stress and he is a plus zero. So he needs an eight or better to suppress it. And he gets an eight. So this is suppressed. So does that mean this never happened? Yes, it never happened. So that should never have been like that. Yes, because he should have done that first. <gasps> I'm an idiot. Right, so now slow pilots attack. So Van here, Bill, is going to attack. He's going to try and shoot this again. He needs a, he's got a plus one. He needs a nine. So he needs an eight or better. And he gets a 10, and we have destroyed the opportunity target. So that is done. I'm going to put that up on there because we got it. Righto. Well done, Van. Good boy. Okay, the next is Harper is attacking here, and this is a zero, and this is a plus one. So his manoeuvre is for a tight turn at minus one, and he gets an eight. Minus one is seven, which is plus one position. So he is actually like that. Is that right? Or, now look, I, I believe that maneuvering still happened before Gallant tried to suppress it. So with him getting one position, it just brings him back there like that. Okay, that's the way I'm going to play it. So then he shoots for minus one. So he needs a nine or better to hit and gets a 10 and blows it away. Well done. Okay, average goes away. Focused goes away. And Harper gets his first kill. Well done, that man. Right. So we can get rid of that now. I hope that's a bit easier rather than what we've been doing. Okay, so that was slow pilots attack, aircraft move. So Harper comes in. Gallant comes in. Walker comes in. Bearcat comes in, and Bill Van comes in. This does nothing. Right. So, we've got an aircraft in there, so we get that. Do, do, do. Turn marker goes to three. Fast pilots attack. No, sorry. Dive bombers to low first would be handy. So Walker goes to low, Bearcat goes to low, Bill is already low. So Bill uses his other situational awareness <coughs> and will bomb. So because he's fast. So he bombs and he is a plus one. So he needs a nine for three hits. Here we go, here we go. And he gets a two, plus one is three, and he gets nothing. Well done, Bill. Huh. Righto. So now Bearcat uses his one, and he is at least got um, a gung-ho. For his thousand pounder. And he is a plus 
four in the dive. So we have a plus four, so he needs a six for two hits. And he gets a nine. So we have two hits. Yay! Because it's actually three. Beautiful. Well done, Bearcat. And then we have Walker with his thousand pounder. And he is a plus two. Oh, sorry. No. He doesn't get to go now. He gets to go later. These were the only fast ones. Sorry about that. So now what we have is we have the Sights and Bandits attack. So we have one, two, three, four Sights that can attack. And these are our three targets. Righty. Oh. Hmm. Okay. First Rifleman. So we have three, six, nine. First Rifleman goes after Bill. Second Rifleman, whoops, sorry, wrong spot, goes after, sorry, Walker. First LMG goes after Walker. And second LMG goes after Bill. Right out. So Rifleman, six plus. Gets a seven, so that is one stress on him. So he goes up to three. And then the LMG is going to fire. Um, okay. It gets a one, so nothing. So they're done. Then Rifleman against Walker. And they get a three, which is nothing. And then the LMG gets a 10, <laughs> which would be done. So we'll use our gung-ho for Walker. And that's it. So now we get to attack. And we'll start here with Van again. And he's going to shoot. He has guns nine plus one, so he needs an eight for a hit. And he gets an eight for a hit. So Van has actually put three hits on there. And that destroys it. But now we're going for this extra VP for overkill. So Bearcat is shooting. And Bearcat is a plus two. Air to, uh, sorry. Plus four air to ground for his dive. And he needs a nine. So five or better. And that's it. And we didn't even have to spend this. Right, so going home event is freely give a pilot in your squadron one skill. Okay, so we'll leave that there. And the other thing is that I didn't do either is I forgot to take one off all their rolls and stuff. So, you know, um, we still did okay. Right, so we'll leave that there. Let's clean up. Gone, 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 gone. Gone, 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 and gone. And that one goes away. We didn't do anything with it. That goes away. That can stay there. Galant's Agile and Gung Ho goes back. Still to be used. Walker's Gung Ho goes back, and he retains his other one. Bearcat's Gung Ho goes back. And... There we go. Okay. So let's bring the chart over. <clears throat> so first things first, we did the homebound. There is no SAR results. Record mission outcome. Righto. So fighter-wise, we had Harper and Gallant. So Field did not fly. Gallant did. Gets 2 XP. Harper did, gets 2 XP. Ryder did not. Um, then we have Lewis did not. Benson did not. It was Davis, Bearcat, Davis and Walker. 
So we had a nothing, 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 one, two, one, two, like that. And Bill, well done that man, gets two, and there we go. So we've used 12 SO points. We got no free SO points, so we have 13 remaining. We got four VP for the target. We got one extra VP is five for the overkill, and we got one for destroying the opportunity is six VP, which takes us to six. We get we get one recon, and we get one intel for it. So recon and intel. And then we give, choose to a pilot to give a skill to. Okay. So, uh, freely give a pilot in your squadron. So he didn't have to fly that mission. All he needed to do was be in the squadron. So what are we going to do? And I think something like a cool is good. Uh, faint, no, teamwork, enthusiastic. Cocky can be br good at times. Uh, attack run is good for a bomber. Lucky is very lucky. What's vengeful? Expand. When our pilot is shot down, add plus three to all rolls for the remainder. Ooh. No, I don't think so. What about amicable? Select another pilot that flew on the mission to have one less stress after the homebound event. Wow, that sounds fine, doesn't it? And we don't have to get rid of it or anything else. So it comes down to, realistically, I think, at the moment, is amicable, lucky, or plus one cool? Hmm. Okay. Now, the trouble with lucky is you have to expend it. So we'll get rid of that for the time being. So it's plus one cool. Do, 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 which is a permanent thing. Okay. Who do we want to give some cool to then? Right, so Field has got a cool. Walker's got two. Lewis has got one. Van's got one. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I think we need to give it two. We've really got to keep the fighters flying. And they are all the weakest at the moment, except for the average Benson. Right. So I think what I'm going to do is, in fact, all the pilots at the moment have got one. Um, and Gardner's got one. So I have to really give it to Bill, Lewis, Bearcat or Walker because they don't have anything yet. Okay, plus one cool. Lewis has already got a cool, so he's out. So that's Benson has got a gung-ho, so he's out. So it's Davis or Bill. And Bill has got a gung-ho and a situational awareness. Oh, and Vandercliff's already got a cool, so that means it is Davis. There we go. I don't know why I made that so difficult, but I did. Righto, so Davis picks up Plus one cool. So he has one cool. Like that. Beautiful. That card goes. This stuff goes. So photo goes back there. Sight goes there. Opportunity goes there. Sight goes there. And there is nothing else to get from this card. So it is gone. Righto. So nobody can upgrade or do anything else. So that's good. 
and we did not do a second mission. So we will go into day two after we've done the stressy stuff. Right. So we've done uh, the recon intel, infra counters, special ops points. Yes, add target card stress to pilots. Okay, Harper uh, does not have any cool, so he gets three stress. Gallant does not have any cool, so he gets three stress and goes to four. Uh, okay, then we have uh, Bearcat, who now has a cool, so he gets two stress. And Walker, who has two cool, so he gets one stress. And poor old Bill who has one cool, gets two more stress, and he's up to five. Okay, so he is shaken. Uh, okay, Bearcat and Walker can still fly. Gallant is totally shaken. He cannot take anything more or else he is broken. And Harper is at the top end of his stress as well. 